Hello, welcome to an extra emergency, and I don't know what's going on edition of Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. And on today's episode, we're going to dig into, of course, the big news coming out today, uh, Bob Bugner being let go by the Sharks. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the takeaways from the press conferences, a new name that has popped up in the general manager search. And then going to talk some of the draft stuff that came out of the uh, press conferences with uh, Doug Wilson Jr. and uh, Trent Burke. So all that and more on this Friday evening edition of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, a contributor at San Jose Hockey Now and Fear the Fin. Uh, thank you guys, of course, for making us your first listen. Free and available wherever we get wherever you get podcasts and, of course, on YouTube as well. And I'll start off at the top with Bob Bugner, which was, you know, the huge news. I, like many of you, woke up to a bunch of notifications about Bob Bugner being fired. And, you know, it, it's... Let's start with it. So Bob Bugner, you know, he was 67, 85, and 23 in his three years with the Sharks. And, you know, Joe Will in his press conference today said, you know, a big reason was, you know, they just didn't make the playoffs the last three seasons. And, you know, especially when they're they're hiring a new GM, which is going to be happening. I wouldn't be surprised if it's this weekend, to be honest, if, if we get uh, news on the GM. But, you know, they're, they're finalizing it. They're going to be hiring their new GM here soon. So, and... You know, we see this all the time. You don't want general managers don't want to come in and inherit an old staff because you know you want your guys. If you're building your own vision and stuff like that, you know you want your guys, and you don't want to inherit the other guys, um, the other guys' guy. Um, so, you know, it's it's tough though because they they kind of did Bob dirty here, and I've you know I'm not the biggest Bob Binger fan. Um, you know, I know he was not handed the best roster and, um, you know, he tried to do his best and, you know, like the, the start of the season, the Sharks were definitely a surprise team and they were a fun team to watch. And, you know, but unfortunately, you know, it wasn't sustainable what they were doing. And we saw that as they missed the playoffs yet again. Um, but I mean, you know, it's this, this roster just isn't that great right now and they're not a playoff caliber roster so you know it's a very much a, a chicken and the egg type of situation was is it bob not being a good coach or is it the roster just not being good and i think it's a little bit of both the roster is not that great but i don't know if bob put the best the the players in the best position to succeed um you know and we've just kyle and i discussed this throughout the season of you know, why is Brent Burns playing 27 minutes a night? And I get he's a veteran and stuff like that. But I mean, at the same time, you got to you got to kind of let these kids, especially as the season's kind of going down the drain, you got to let some of these younger guys, you know, get more ice time and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, the Jonathan Dolan thing where, you know, after his injury, he never he never was the same, but at the same time, he wasn't really put in a position to kind of bounce back. And, you know, I don't think, you know, playing him on a fourth line when Jonathan Dolan's a skill guy just doesn't really suit his skills with, you know, his deployment, you know, stuff like that, where it was, you know, playing, <laughs> playing James Reimer 13 games in a row um, until he almost dies on the ice type of situation. You know, just like tactical stuff like that. Um, I know the penalty kill was great, but like the power play was still a mess. And, you know, seeing how they deployed the power play and who played on the power play. And um, yeah, again, so I, it's tough, right? Bob Bugner, he did his best, I, I think. And, you know, he, you know, unfortunately, he probably isn't going to get another shot at being a head coach, maybe. Um, he'll probably have to go back to being an assistant coach for a little while. There isn't, you know, I think basically now the shark, uh, the, you know, the Bruins, 
uh, hired their coach. I think um, the Jets are basically the last team where they're going to be hiring theirs. And now it's just going to be the, the Sharks are the only team left. So they're going to be kind of going through the slim pickings of who's available. So um, of some of those guys available, uh, you know, I, I think um, – Corey Mosaic of The Athletic, he put together a really great list. I'm not going to go through all of them, so go check out his list, you know, since he, it is paywalled. Some guys that that piqued my interest, um, you know, and you're kind of, as I talk about these guys, you're going to see a very familiar theme with them um, of, of development, I guess, would be the best best theme. But, you know, he put together like 20 guys. You know, I picked like six or six of them, I think, who uh, – just names that kind of intrigued me. Um, Andrew Burnett of the Panthers, who was just like, oh, after, you know, he took over for the Panthers after Quinville was fired, after the whole situation with the Chicago stuff, um, you know, rightfully fired, I, I, would, I will add. But Burnett was, or Quinville was rightfully fired. Burnett, I, I think they should have given him another year, especially after, I mean, losing to the Lightning is is no... Anyway, that's another story. But, um, you know, I know that team was very loaded, but, I mean, I, I like the way he deploys his players and puts them in, in positions to succeed. Uh, Benoit Drew, uh, the Tampa Bay AHL coach, um, development, development, development. Uh, Ricard Gronberg, who we've waxed poetically about on this podcast before, um, of what he's done over in Europe and just kind of that positionless hockey and just kind of an outside the box thinker, you know, again, I think putting players in the position to succeed, uh, Ryan Wasarski, the, the, uh, Wasowski, sorry, the Canes AHL coach, you know, the, that again, that whole development piece. And then Jeff, uh, Halpern, the Tampa assistant coach. So we already saw one of the, uh, the Tampa coaches getting hired by the Red Wings, you know, I think, coming from that tree and, you know, the way they develop their guys and the way they deploy and kind of, uh, you know, develop and transition. And again, just putting players in the best position to succeed. I think these are guys who kind of all fit that mold. So um, before we get to the newest name that popped up as a potential uh, candidate for the GM position for the Sharks, do need to take a quick break. And talk to you guys about our friends over at Bet Online. You guys know Bet Online is the number one source for your latest, uh, all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, including league reviews, news. Um, they have Major League Baseball, of course. You have UFC, MMA, boxing, golf, NFL futures. You're going to have, you know, you can go bet on if Kevin Durant's going to get traded. They've got you covered for everything under the sun. Um, they remain the best spot for your sports scores, podcasts, other than this one, and news this season. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the transactions. Bet online where the game starts. Plus, also, if you guys don't know, the draft is next Thursday night, the uh, first round. And I will be going live after the draft, the first round of the draft, covering your San Jose Sharks. Um, so join me. You know, that night, um, I'll probably, as, as it winds down, I'll probably go live so we can get maybe the final picks and all that fun stuff. But to cover the Sharks as they get your immediate reaction to the Sharks moves, subscribe to Lockdown Sharks on YouTube for all the latest breakdowns and live reactions on the NHL draft and more. All right, so an interesting name did kind of pop up uh, today with all the craziness that is going on. Um, let me get my notes here. So uh, Darren Dreger, he mentioned that uh, Scott Mellonby has kind of popped up with all the general managers searches. And so um, Joe Will said they are trying to finalize. We've heard anywhere from three to five. This would put us at three candidates if you count Mike Greer, Ray Whitney, and now Scott Mellonby as potential candidates. Um, this one's maybe the most interesting of the, the guys that we've heard because um, he's actually has – a lot of front office experience. He hasn't been a general manager, but he's been in the front office for a long time. So he was uh, part of the Montreal Canadiens front office. He was hired by player personnel in 2012 and then became assistant general manager in 2014 and held that position until uh, 2021, where he uh, he quit after the whole Mark Bergeron situation where he was getting let go. Um, Melanby didn't think he would be 
you know, hired as a new general manager. So, you know, there's that whole, do you hire one of the old guys, you know, kind of and keep the same thing going. Um, and for him, he, he honestly felt that he had probably earned that right to be a general manager with the amount of work that he'd been put in. We've all been there where you get passed over for promotion and, uh, you don't want to work there anymore because it's just not. Yeah. So, um, he recently had hi, uh, interviewed with the Blackhawks for their uh, general manager position this spring. He's also uh, interviewed with like the Florida Panthers a couple years ago. So he's been a name that, that's been around and has been um, highly touted for, you know, being a potential general manager. So um, if you're going to go with a, a new general manager or a general manager who doesn't have actual general managing experience, I mean, I don't think he. This is the worst option in the world. You know, he, like I said, he has been working with. You know, he's been in the front office for a long time. Um, also worked with the Laval Rockets, so we know development is is going to be something that's important to him. And I think, you know, we we've talked about how important getting this development piece right is for the Sharks and how they've restructured. You know, they look at the Barracuda where they've restructured that. Um, you know, hiring John McCarthy and you know, and putting Roy Summers into the front office. And, you know, they, I think they feel like with such an influx of talent now where they, they, they can't screw up this development piece. So, you know, I think getting a general manager and then a, a coach who that's their whole thing is developing. And, you know, I know Paso Platter wants to make the playoffs and contend and stuff like that. But I think if you let these guys come in and let them let, your pieces develop for a little bit, you're going to, it might be a step back now to take multiple steps forward. Um, I don't know. I don't think whoever, whoever's coming in isn't, isn't going to be allowed to just tear it down and, and start f- from scratch. You know, we've discussed this several times on this podcast because of the moves that the Sharks have made and, and stuff where they're just not in that mode to tear things down. Um, you know, so I, I think Scott Melby, potential that's interesting you know he, he again we're, we're we're getting some names that are starting to leak out here on, on who could be uh the potential general manager so uh another kind of comment from from joe will's press conference today was on the buyout um where you know he was asked you know the buyout period did start today friday the first um it runs through the 12th um so that tuesday before uh, free agency. And of course the big name for the sharks would be one Mark Edward Vlasic. And, you know, he was asked straight up, are you going to buy out uh, Vlasic? And, you know, he kind of tiptoed around it and said, that's not, that's not something we're looking down. That's, you know, kind of your last, uh, last resort type of thing. Um, he didn't really want to go down that road, you know, when, when I kind of pressed on it, but and I don't blame him. That's going to be a decision for whoever the new general manager is. You know, you don't want to commit one way or another. And then the the new general manager comes in and maybe he's able to trade. Not that he's going to trade him, but, you know, you don't want to commit for, for whoever your new general manager is. So, I mean, that is going to be one of the, the I think, the pressing needs that he, they're going to have to do. Whoever the general manager is going to have to deal with right away is, you know, what do you do with Vlasic? And I'm still the belief that I, I think – We've seen Vlasic's last days in Teal um, just because the flexibility of moving off of him allows you to kind of do some other stuff um, just like, as a kind of a quick reminder of what the uh, the the buyout would be for him. Um, so Vlasic, if he is bought out this year, um, he would save the Sharks. Hold on one second. Pulling it up right now. Um, if he would save the Sharks, uh, it would save him three million dollars this year. It's about three point three million dollars this year for a cap hit of three points, uh, nearly three point seven. Next year, they'd have a really nice big savings of uh, five and a half million. Um, the year after that, they would save two point eight, um, and then the year after that, they would save one point eight, and then they would have four years at one point six eight seven five hundred. Um, so that would run until 2029-30. So we'll see. I mean, there's other – you could try to bury him in the AHL and stuff. I don't think that's going to happen. And, um, yeah, I just – he doesn't I don't, He doesn't want to get traded. Um, 
yeah, that's that's just not going to happen. Like nobody's going to take on that contract. He, I mean, the Sharks would have to this there. Yeah, they'd have to attach multiple assets to to get uh classic out if they try to trade him he just does not have any value anymore in a trade and and he has no movement clause so if he doesn't want to get traded he's not going to get traded so that's 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 just where it is for classic so um again like i said i think he's going to i think just i have a gut feeling i think we've seen classics last days with the sharks especially you know if the new general manager and the new coaching staff they need to make the playoffs and you could use that three million dollars to go do something else so you know you could find a very comparable if not better defenseman for that same three million dollars or you know like ethan bear if he was you know if he becomes available you know i think i'd rather have ethan bear for three million dollars and vlasic for seven million dollars so um just you know as an example or if you want to go try to find a score um you know having three million dollars to your cap could definitely help out. So um, before we kind of get into the uh, Doug Wilson, um, you know, Tim Burke um, kind of portion of, of their press conferences with the draft, let's go ahead and take a quick break. Um, talk to you guys about our friends over at uh, Built Bar. You guys know Built Bar, best tasting protein bar on the market. And now they have coconut brownie chunk puffs. They're great. They're coconut, they're brownie. They're chunk, uh, chunkies, brownie flavors, all covered. It's a delicious chewy marshmallow with 100% real chocolate. It's a fluffy cloud of chocolate brownie goodness. Stop join and listen. They're not only are they good, they're good for you. They're low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and all delicious. But make sure you guys hurry up and get them now because they are only here for a limited time. So go to built.com now to make sure that you don't miss out. They're going fast because they taste amazing. And if chunky coconut brownie chunk puff doesn't sound that great to you, they have them others that you can try. Or if you want to check out a box that has a whole variety of them, they've got you covered there. So go to build.com, use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your first order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Okay. The draft portion of today's press conferences. So, you know, we, we had Doug Wilson Jr. And, you know, kind of talking about what they expect kind of heading. This is actually what they were supposed to talk about today was, was the draft. But um, they talked about how the lack of a general manager isn't going to really kind of change their plan. And I think they're going to have a general manager beforehand. You know, um, it, it would especially with how close it feels that they are to getting a general manager, it would seem um, a little weird that they don't have a general manager in, in place a week from now or less than a week from now. So um, yeah, so th that'll be fine. And, you know, looking again, I think with a general manager, you know, all the work, the scout work has been done type of thing, where it's, it's not going to, the new general manager is going to come on and just kind of blow up all the scouting and stuff because that that's just all that work has been done right now. So um, other kind of fun tidbits and stuff like that, um, that they might be looking to get back into the second round. Um, so she goes this draft, it, it does, you know, Doug Wilson Jr. Did say this draft does feel a little bit deeper. So trying to get back into the second round uh, might be something that they're, that they're looking to do. Um, you know, there, there's going to be a, a bunch of great players for the, you know, in the second round that slipped to the second round and we'll be looking back and be like, wow, how did that guy go to the second round? So I wouldn't be surprised if they try to trade back into the second round. I don't know what they're going to have to give up or do. Um, is that maybe moving down from 11 and then acquiring more assets potentially again, but the whole thing is it does take two to trade. And I don't know, especially again, if this, draft is kind of deeper in that that middle section why would a team trade up if they could probably just get their guy or get a very similar guy by just sitting and waiting so as you know it is fun to talk about trading trading back and stuff i just again who who is unless somebody's like sliding um and the sharks get overwhelmed with a package then yes by all means trade back i just 
we, we just don't see a lot of tr big jumps like that, you know, especially I think there's, you know, I, I just, it's just not like a big thing that we see, in, especially in the, in the um, NHL, where it's, you know, like the NFL, where it's like if a quarterback sliding and it's like, oh, this team already has a quarterback. With these players, you're just, what you, your needs now are going to change by the time the players who are drafted are making the NHL. So, yeah, we'll see. But, um, unless they move a move a contract. So um, other kind of potential or other kind of Doug Wilson Jr. Uh, stuff, um, you know, that he they did say that um, they're going to let their prospects play in tournaments, which we did have with William Eklund first. He did, you know, mention that with his interview. Uh, but that means Bordolo will also get to play in World Juniors. And if there's anybody, anybody who deserves to play in World Juniors, uh, more than Thomas Bordalo, I would, yeah, that guy. Again, quick reminder. So uh, the 2020, um, he missed because his roommate had a false positive, um, so he couldn't play then. And then last year, he got hurt slash, or I guess this, the 2021 that was canceled anyway. Um, he got hurt and got COVID right beforehand. So. Um, Bordalo, I, ex I expect Bordalo and Eklund to play, and whoever the you know, hopefully whoever the Sharks draft is also a World uh, Juniors candidate as well, because that'll be you know fun to watch those guys this August kind of you know get some get some uh, real some competition under them and kind of get their season kickstarted with, with with that tournament. So which is always super fun, um, yeah, World Juniors and USA, which has now defended their title for forever um good for them so um yeah and then I, I think you know the other kind of thing is there's they're open to trading uh pick 11 for a potential um player but they it's most likely not going to happen just because it just feels like they'd have to you know they'd have to find somebody like there and again takes two to, to to trade right and i don't know what caliber player is going to be available that the sharks would be willing to give up number 11 um that's isn't also going to be kind of again they have to pay that player for a team that is uh not in a great spot right now when it comes to the cap so yeah it's been a big day it's been a big day so um yeah that's going to do it for this uh emergency what's going on episode of, of locked on sharks um be around all weekend so if the sharks do make their general manager hire i'll be right on top of it uh you know get you guys out in an emergency episode as, as soon as that happens um at least i'll try to if they do something this weekend if not um we'll cover it during the week whenever we can cover it so we got the draft coming up of course on tuesday and so we're going to be doing all kinds of uh, you know, draft stuff. So Monday, we're going to be looking at three big questions for the Sharks heading into the draft. You know, we're going to look at some of the best case and worst case scenarios. We're going to do kind of a final mock uh, or kind of final big board and kind of that type of stuff. So plenty of stuff as we head into the draft and covering a new general manager and potential new coaches and all that stuff. So uh, make sure you guys follow along wherever uh, follow on on the old social medias, so Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, Locked on Sharks, post all of our work there, let you guys know whenever we have uh, new stuff coming out as well. Um, you can listen, Apple, Spotify, Odyssey. Uh, leave, if you're on Apple, please, nice five-star review. Haven't haven't gotten one in a while. So um, YouTube, go ahead and subscribe there as well. And you can catch me on Twitter at my fry hole. And be back Monday or maybe this weekend. Who knows? Bye, friends.